live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE's live special coverage here at VMworld 2018. This is our ninth year covering VMworld theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman breaking down Pat Gelsinger's keynote. Pat Gelsinger's sixth year as CEO. We got two live sets here, three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Again, ninth year covering VMworld. Uh, we're going to kick off the keynote analysis here and break into the hard call. Action. Ton of news uh, with VMware. Really got a spring in their step. Pat Gelsinger, sixth year as CEO. Dave Vellante, Stu Miniman, let's break it down. Let's go through the analysis. Sixth year as CEO. A couple years ago, Pat was on shaky ground. Michael Dell's making more money than God these days with his, his financial situation. But the big news, Andy Jassy from Amazon Web Services came off the stage and announced that they are doing their first on-premises solution. Oh, well, they didn't say that, that's what I'm saying. He actually means. That's what it is. <laughs> RDS, an Amazon Web Services relational database service on VMware, which is going to be running on-premises. Guys, let's, let's break down the keynote. That's the big news. There's a lot of other stuff in here. Obviously, emphasis on edge, showing a little bit of direction on edge, but the interplay of cloud, mobile, AI, and machine learning. Uh, Stu, your take. Yeah, John, you know, we sat here, you know, analyzing this VMware AWS relationship. Is this a one-way move uh, to the public cloud? Is Amazon just going to take those 500,000 VMware customers and get them all to migrate? Even in the start of Andy and Pat up on stage, you know, Andy goes, the number one use case is migrating your applications to the public cloud. And Pat's like, and the number two use case is, you know, bursting and on demand and things like that. So it's an interesting dynamic between what we call, you know, you got the gorilla in the data center of VMware and you've got, you know, the 800 pound gorilla in the cloud, fast as a cheetah, as Dave Vellante says, in AWS. But RDS on premises, this is a big deal. I tell you, I'm surprised. Most people here are surprised. Uh, there'd been discussion, uh, we were at some shows recently when uh, they're expanding the Snowball use case. Snowball's great, it's edge, it's helping to migrate things to the data center. This is an Amazon service running in VMware on premises. Didn't think that we would be seeing this from Amazon, whose you know, goal was, we thought, to get 100% of things in the public cloud, but we know there's going to be edge, we know there's going to be data center stuff for a long time. Huge news, Amazon Web Service, RDS on VMware. Dave Vellante, this is an interesting validation for Amazon, this is something that they've never done before, it's out of their DNA to go actually partner and then bring an on-premises device. It essentially validates hybrid cloud, validates multi-cloud, validates essentially the movement that we're seeing with not just multi-cloud, it's, it's all things data center on-premises is now going cloud operations. So you got operators in the VMware culture and you got developers and scale and Amazon Web Services. You know, who's running the show up there? Jassy or Gelsinger? What's your analysis of the big news from Amazon Web Services? Well, I got to give props to David Floyer. Three years ago he said, AWS will absolutely have an on-prem strategy to compete with Azure Stack and other on-prem solutions. They have to because of what Wikibon calls true private cloud. You can't just move all the data into the cloud. So his prediction has come true. But I want to go back to three years ago, John. You're right on. Three years ago, Pat Gelsinger was under fire. The stock was down. Uh, uh, license revenue was in the single digit growth. Today, VMware's, this year will be a $9 billion company with a $60 billion market cap, Stu. That's, that's a 100X return from when your former company, and Joe Tucci, EMC, bought VMware for about $635 million. Yeah, and and, and so, Dave, I, I love your, your, your analysis on this because it, this isn't just general purpose, we're talking RDS, this is database. Andy Jassy would like nothing more than to take a big chunk out of Larry Ellison's business. The stickiest application in the enterprise today is the database, that's a huge piece, and now VMware, you know, Dave, how many years did we talk about trying to virtualize databases and how challenging that was and what, you know, the licensing and what Oracle could do, and now you got VMware arm in arm with Amazon to try to help customers migrate that really sticky application. Well, the big question is, is, is the AWS VMware relationship a, a one-way trip to the hotel cloud of Fornia, <laughs> or is it a boon for the data center? Yeah. And, you know, potentially the answer is both. However, near term has clearly given uh, uh, VMware momentum. Long term, however, this company has some work to do before it has what, what we would call a cloud first hybrid cloud strategy. They talk Kubernetes, they, they'll, they'll talk containers. 
but the degree to which those things are fundamental and integrated into the platform, and you guys can talk to this better than I can, are a long ways off, and so the key is they have to invest. Now, here's the problem. VMware has $13 billion of cash on its balance sheet. 11 billion of that is going as a special dividend to VMware to shareholders, Dell. to Dell, 80% yeah. to Dell. And Dell's using that to buy out the DVMT stock and then do a public offering. Is that the best use of VMware's cash? Obviously not, but that's the price you pay to have independence. Well, let's, let's the VMware is printing money right now. The revenue is great. The profits are strong, as you pointed out. Dell's making more money. He's going to double his money from when he started this deal. Um, but if you look at the world of Amazon and cloud, Stu and Dave, yeah, let's look at this because the growth that's going to happen over the next 20 years is going to be different. I think, you know, Pat Kelsinger's an Intel guy. Wintel, Windows, Intel. This is a, you know, in, is this a Windows Intel moment for cloud where you got Amazon and VMware essentially dividing and conquering point. the territory and what's the growth going to look like if that flywheel is going to be integrating? And Gelsinger said, you know, servers, I mean, working with cloud and machine learning are all have an interplay component. More data, more a better AI, you know, faster horsepower. So I don't see this as mutually exclusive. And I think the validation of the Amazon deal that Jassy talked about is RDS on premises absolutely means that Amazon's looking at the data center as an edge. <laughs> the VMware community looks at the cloud as a, an edge for them. So this is all cloud. Yeah, the John, growth is going to be massive. And the piece that ties it all together is networking. I have to say, I was super skeptical when a few years ago, Pat Gelsinger got up sta on stage and said, we're the biggest networking company in the world because of all our virtual switches. And the audience was like, what are you talking about? We're not networking people, we're not doing this. Look at the NSX business. They have the VeloCloud acquisition. They've been building out what the promise of NYSERA was. I was so excited, and my friends in the networking world, when NYSERA talked about the vision for this multi-cloud and, and really the, the, the glue that'll tie all these things together, there for a few years it was just, well, we're making virtualization better, and that was nice, but now it's a multi-cloud vision. They're extending the uh, NSXT. Uh, they've got a deep integration with Amazon that I think it's in preview right now. I've talked to some people that are playing with it. It doesn't fully work yet, but with AWS Direct Connect, they're partnering with Arista. John, we're going to be talking to Andy Bechtelstein, legend in the industry in a couple of minutes. Networking and security, if VMware can ride that next wave, what Pat said next year is that this will be even bigger than kind of the virtualization wave was, the networking, and absolutely the opportunities there, and we're starting to see some proof points that VMware is, is heading in the right direction. I want to share some, uh, some, some data from research. Uh, Wikibon's True Private Cloud report says that True Private Cloud this year will be a $32 billion business. Gartner guy came out and said 80% of data centers will shut down by 2025. That caused a lot of brouhaha. My friend Kwong Kim over at ETR, Enterprise Technology Research, their data, their research shows that VMware is being pressured by both public cloud and containers, and interestingly, Nutanix, Azure, AWS, Kubernetes, and Docker right now yeah. have all the momentum. Yeah, well on that, on that point, the thing that Gelsinger said, a couple things on there got my attention. One is, he made a comment that customers should never pay for DR ever again in the future. I made a note of that one. But he made a comment about the quote that was mentioned in the history of tech, which is, the network is the computer. He said, in the future, application is the network. And that's to your point that as the world starts changing with DevOps, the entire role of the network and the application are going to change significantly. We know that the network's going to be programmable, we know apps are going to start self-provisioning, and then when you start adding in this notion of on-premises with Amazon, the database business is what <laughs> VMware is essentially helping Amazon win. Jassy said, quote, our database business and the billions of revenue. So they're doing billions of dollars in database as a cloud company. Absolutely a strategic deal for AWS to do that. And again, storage options are getting cheaper. They're integrating EBS with vSAN, that was a notable. Integrate NSX with AWS Connect. Again, is NSX going to be the interconnecting component between clouds? Is that going to be the TCP IP of what cloud is? Yes. Database is well, a linchpin and, and, and Dave, you're pointing out VMware has work to do to be cloud first, if you will. One of the moves, they made an acquisition day. 200 person company, Boston based, we know them well. Cloud Health Technologies, uh, Joe Kinsella, I've had a chance to interview, uh, talk to a number of the team. They're actually opening their new headquarters in Boston on Thursday. I'm hitting it when I fly back to Boston when I get back. They are deep in the Amazon ecosystem and doing quite well there. If, if VMware can be seen not just as a data center virtualization company, but 
do they have a real play across, uh, you know, they talked about Google in the keynote, they talk about how they tie into the Microsoft ecosystem. If they can really play in this multi-cloud world, they have an opportunity to be one of the strategic players to help companies in this next generation of IT. And, and they have some time, but they got to get going. They, it can't take as long for them to go cloud first as it did for them to actually get vSAN to the marketplace, you know, up and running. So, yeah. and, and, and Dell has to have a fine line, the balancing act between paying down its debt, sucking out the money, doing things like uh, recapitalization, and funding VMware. I mean, it's not cloud first anymore, it's cloud now. Cloud is happening now. You see the big news, Amazon Web Services, on-premise with RDS, relational database service, on VMware, Act, VMware acquiring cloud health. These are tell signs that the cloud business is reshaping and reimagining how enterprises and the suppliers do business. We're going to break it down for you here on theCUBE for three days. We have a wrap up at the end of the day with a big lineup of guests, 94 guests throughout the entire event, over 72 interviews we got going on, ton of action. Stay with us for three days. This is theCUBE here at VMworld 2018. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. We'll be back with more coverage after this short break.